Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Chef Teddy and Paul. We're so glad you could join us here in our home. And um, we hope that you're gonna enjoy what we have to cook tonight. We have something really amazing, we think. I know, I'm really looking forward to eating it. Um, We're gonna be making a seafood mac and cheese, twice baked seafood mac and cheese, actually. And um, it's, it's gonna be super delicious. So, let's get right to it, huh? Okay, here we are. Teddy, I don't think you can wear both hats at the same time. I, I know you're excited for Christmas, but one or the other, dude. Let's go to the kitchen. All right, here we are back in the kitchen. Let me get myself all set up here. As we said, we are going to be making a really beautiful twice baked seafood macaroni and cheese. And if you look down here, you'll see we have all of our beautiful ingredients already laid out and ready to go. I have some shrimp. I have two lobster tails. You can also make this with scallops or crab or all four or, you know, anything you like, but I like lobster and shrimp the best, so that's what I'm using. I also have some Gruyere cheese, which is essentially a kind of Swiss cheese. You have uh, some white cheddar cheese, which is a little bit sharper version of cheddar cheese. You have, we have some grated uh, Parmigiano Reggiano, which is essentially baby Parmesan cheese. Uh, Parmesan cheese is usually aged between three and four years. This is aged usually around two years, 24 months or so. And we have some mar mascarpone cheese. So um, that's what we got. We also have spices and some breadcrumbs and of course the pasta. I'm using fusilli, uh, but you can use uh, cavatelle or in pretty much anything, shells, whatever you like. Um, I wouldn't recommend using something large, uh, like a rigatoni, um, but you know, any kind of smaller pasta, uh, I think the fusilli is about as large as you really want to get. And I'm using that because I had some extra laying around. Um, also I have some parsley, some pepper, some salt, paprika, um, and uh, that's about all you're going to need, I think. Pretty sure that's it. Oh, milk, you're going to need milk. but. I have that still in the refrigerator. So let's get to going. Right now I have a pot of water here on the boil getting ready for the pasta so I can get that done. Uh, but in the meantime, let's put Teddy over here on his perch. And I can grab a bowl and a pan. Start to get that pan heated up a little bit. What I want to do is I'm going to take some ingredients and I'll put them in this bowl. I'm going to toss the shrimp in them just to get the shrimp so that it is not um, flavorless. You want to have some flavored shrimp. Put the shrimp in a bowl like so. This is about uh, 12 ounces of shrimp. Uh, that's about the amount that you want to use. 
Do about half a teaspoon of salt. With that, a few grinds on your pepper grinder. Not too, too much. And you want to do a drizzle of oil. Give that a big swirly swirl, tossy tossed up. Get it all covered in oil, get it all covered in the salt and pepper. And then you can just drop them into your, your uh, skillet. Obviously, I didn't mention this, but you have to devein and shell the <laughs> the uh, shrimp first. You want to do about two to three minutes on each side. Hold that aside for a second. Now for the lobster, I'm gonna take a medium saucepan, get that heated up. I've put the drippings from the pan that I cooked the shrimp in. I could have cooked it in the same pan, but uh, I wanted a little bit more space because that pan was bigger. This doesn't need to be as big and really should be smaller because of what we're doing with the lobsters. You know, put, uh, tablespoon of oil and get to heat that up on low heat all right it looks like our water is boiling we can throw our pasta in now when you cook this pasta pay attention to it you don't want to cook it all the way to the end uh, whatever the cook time is take off one minute uh, this one the cook time is about 10 minutes so I'm gonna go about nine. All right, our oil is warmed up now and we wanna add two tablespoons of butter and let that melt down. All right, we take our lobster tails. I'm gonna put them in to this butter solution and they're gonna cook for four to five minutes. No! You were fine like a day ago. Son of a... some fresh diced parsley to the uh, lobster tails. Just a pinch. And then cook them for one more minute with the, with the parsley. Looks like our pasta has come pretty close to ready. Let's give that a little try here, make sure it's all done, okay? Yeah, that's good. Drain your pasta and put it aside for a moment. All right, our lobster is done. Oh, 
Also gonna put that on a plate and put aside. That looks good. It smells good too. All right. Yikes, that's hot still. Put that back there where it's not hot yet. Using the same pan that you were just using for the lobster. You know, melt four more tablespoons of butter. And separate out a cup of panko breadcrumbs, specifically panko. And put those that cup of, pep of breadcrumbs in now that the butter is melted. We're gonna add to that half a teaspoon of salt. A couple grinds on the pepper grinder. And another pinch of the parsley. Mix that up all real good. Get those those breadcrumbs all good and covered in the butter. And we're gonna cook this like this on the stove top for about four minutes. Get it kind of dried out. That's what you're looking for. You want to get the butter infused into the panko, but you also want to get it kind of dried on the on the heat here. So you do want to keep it stirring because you do not want them to brown. You don't want them to turn into toast. Since we're talking about breadcrumbs here, on heat. We're also on low heat, if you're wondering. While that's browning, I'm going to take three cups of milk and I'm going to warm that in a small saucepan over here. All right, our breadcrumbs are finished. Let's set that aside. All right, we're gonna take another four tablespoons of butter. We're gonna drop this into a small saucepan and allow it to melt. All right, and to this butter, we're gonna add a quarter cup of flour. Slowly and easily whisking it together. And that's quite nice. Let that cook there for about two minutes. Okay, now raise your temperature on your butter mixture. And now that our warm, our milk is warmed, we're gonna slowly add the more milk to the butter mixture. Now we're gonna continue to whisk this for about five minutes until the mixture thickens. All right. This is called a bechamel sauce. It's French. It's beautiful. It's, I don't know how to pronounce it. Maybe it's bechamel? I don't know. B-E-C-H-A-M-E-L. To my understanding of French, that would be bechamel. So we're gonna add our Gruyere cheese. This is one and a half cups of Gruyere. We're gonna add one and a half cups of white cheddar as well.
three ounces of mascarpone. Stir that in there. That's gonna start to melt pretty nicely. Okay, we also want to add a quarter teaspoon of paprika. If I can get this to open. There it is. A quarter teaspoon of ground mustard. Ooh. Shake first. Teaspoon of salt. And a teaspoon of pepper. Mix that. We're gonna dice up our our lobster. We're gonna dice up our shrimp as well. Put aside a couple of whole ones for the top because that looks pretty. You don't actually have to dice up at all if you don't want to. It's, these are small pieces of shrimp, at least the ones I'm using. If you're using small shrimp, it doesn't matter. But depending on how much seafood you like in each bite of your mac and cheese, it's going to make a difference. That's right. That's good enough. All right, you want to take your, your sauce now and pour it over your pasta. Stir it together real good. Add your various seafood. Saving these shrimp for the side, like I said. Stir that in as well. This mixes together. Goes together really easily. Get your casserole dishes that you want to use. All right. And now what we want to do is we want to take our Parmigiano Reggiano. We're gonna liberally cover the top. This, this is about a cup of that particular cheese. And then, going to take our breadcrumb mixture. to do the same. Uh. If you used fresh parsley, your mixture will be a little bit green.
And then we pop it into the oven. Center rack. First we put it on a cooking sheet, then we pop it in the oven, center rack, 350 degrees. All right, for 25 minutes. And then we're done. Well, okay. This looks marvelous. As you saw, very easy to cook. Let's see what we got for taste. Snack a fry first. Mm. Raleigh's and Checkers fries or the combination Raleigh's Checkers fries were on sale at Publix today. So I picked up a bag. A penny an ounce. That's like amazing price. Oh. That's great. It's good. Mm. Got a nice crisp crunch on the top. Mm. Lobster's good. Mm. That is really good. We have succeeded. Yay! So, go out, give this a try. It's really good. I think you'll like it. And um, thank you for joining us here, uh, Chef Teddy and Paul. We will see you again next week. In the meantime, please remember, eat well, cook lots, and no one should die hungry. Bye. Oh yeah, Teddy. What do you think? So Penny, you ever had anything like this? We used to make this all the time where I come from, but we didn't have lobster, so we would use shrimp and penguin wings. Teddy, dude, really? Not cool. <laughs>